Hi, Michael Fudge here. I'm here to give you a quick tour of Python's Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook allows you to program in a web browser. It's a mix of code, instructions, and output, and all of this information is, is displayed inline in one web page, which makes it very useful for writing code that tells a story. Jupyter Notebook is used by scientists and researchers. If you want to program an application, Jupyter Notebook is not the right format to use. We'll be using a different programming environment for that. Okay, I'm out at my command line here, and uh, I'm going to start Jupyter Notebook up, Jupyter Notebook. When you type in Jupyter Notebook, what you'll see is that it echoes a lot of things to the console here. These are messages about what Jupyter Notebook is doing. It's running a web server at this URL right here, http colon localhost 8888. I have that open right here in this window. And so now I split my screen so that over here on the left side, you see the console, and then over here on the right, uh, you see the application Jupyter. This is a really interesting way to, to run it when you're trying to demonstrate it to other people so that they can see the effects of what you do over here and how it, how it changes over here in the console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of our lessons here. And you always know the ones that you should be opening up in Jupyter because they end in IPYNB. That's the IPython notebook file. So I'm going to open this up. And you'll see that over here in the console, it now shows me that it has launched uh, a kernel. And what a kernel is, is as a programming environment. Jupyter is set up so that you can run more than just Python programs. You can execute lots of different programming languages in Jupyter. By default, the way we have our class set up is it runs Python in Jupyter. But you can certainly run other languages as well. Uh, Jupyter is a pretty easy environment to get through. When you click inside the box, it turns green. Now you're in edit mode and you can write your program. And let's just make it say hello to me. So this little program here will uh, ask me for my name, store it in a variable, and then print the word hello, and then print whatever's in the variable. That's all it's going to do. It's two lines of code. So when I want to execute this, I use this button up here. You can also press Shift and Enter to execute the cell. And this asterisk means that it's running. So the cell is running right now. It says, enter your name. It's waiting for me to do something. I'll put in my name. And it says, hello to me. And now that it's a number, it's finished running. Blue means you're in command mode. So if I click on this cell, now I'm editing this cell. If I click on this cell, I'm editing this cell. If I want to switch it to command mode, I hit the escape key on the keyboard. And now I flipped over to command mode. What can you do in command mode? Well, this button up here shows you all the different commands. And this is kind of like Google web search for your command. So if I want to turn line numbers on and I don't know what the command is, I can type in line. It says, oh, toggle line numbers. That's command L. So I can either click that right here to turn the line numbers on, or I can now do it in command mode. So I can hit escape L. Escape L. See, it toggles the line numbers on and off. And I know I'm in command mode because it's blue. When I click in the cell, it's green. That's edit mode. The pencil up here also tells you it's in edit mode. So I'm down here, pencil mode, I hit escape, it's in command mode, the pencil goes away. So that's just a, a quick tour of how command mode and edit mode work. The other thing that happens a lot of times is you'll be running your program, and you're in the middle of running a program, then you come down here and you start to edit this cell, and I, I put other, another program down here like this, and then I try to execute this cell, and it doesn't work because like this cell's still running, and so I can't execute this cell. It's kind of a little bit of a problem. What you have to do here is, you now you've got this program that's stuck. It doesn't know what to do. I have to either finish this program up here, or I can also do what's called restarting the kernels. The easiest way to demonstrate it is if I execute this program in this cell, and then execute this program over here in this cell, uh, I'm waiting for this cell to finish, but this one hasn't finished running either. Maybe I don't want to run this, so I can restart the kernel. That's this button here. Uh, you can also go up to the menu and do it, kernel and then restart, and then you have to hit a button to restart it. Uh, when I do that, um, over here it says kernel restarted at the command line, you see that? And what it has done is it has killed Python and then reattached Python to Jupyter, so I have a brand new Python environment. Now I can run this cell again, and it, it should work, and it does, right? It should be noted that when you restart the kernel, you lose all of the variables that you have in memory. So whatever value I assigned to name, I would have lost. And I can quickly demonstrate that. Right now, if I go down here and say name, it's going to say Mike. 
because that's the value I typed in up in this program up here. See down here, I can write a program that just says, hey, what's in name? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the kernel. And I'm just going to run this cell down here. And it's going to give me uh, a name error because I have not defined a value for name because the code up here has not run yet. So one way you can restart your kernel if you need to do this is if you restart and clear all output, it erases all the numbers in here, giving you an indicator that nothing has run yet because until you execute the code, you don't see a number there. The number says that the code has executed. So this is the first thing that's executed in this notebook and then I go up here and run this. And then this is the next thing that's executed in the, in the notebook. Then I go down here. And then this is the third thing that's executed in the notebook. Then I can go back up here. And now this is the fourth thing that's executed in the notebook. So these numbers are handy because they tell you if something's running, it'll be an asterisk. If it's done running, it'll have a number in there. And then again, when you restart the kernel and clear the output, all the numbers go back to being empty. And that's a sign that you've erased everything out of Python's memory and start it all over again. You can certainly restart the kernel and not uh, clear all the output, but if you're having trouble, it's useful to clear all the output to remind you that all these cells need to be executed again before you have any of the information stored in the Python interpreter. When you're finished with Jupyter Notebook, you might be wondering how you get back to the command line. You can see that the application's over here and then I still have the console running over there. So what you'll do is just close and halt here. That quits the application and terminates the kernel. So it's no longer running here. And then I can just close this tab. I don't need it anymore because uh, I'm going to shut down the web server over here. And to shut down the web server on this side, you just press Control-C twice, and it will interrupt and shut down the kernels. Now Jupyter is no longer running.